I've never really ridden solo before. I might go to the shops alone or sit in a motorway by myself for a few hours, but I've never made the decision to set out on my own for any length of time, to just be me in the road. I think it's a great opportunity for self-reflection. The piece can be very meditative if you have a lot to think about. Typically, I'll ride with someone else. Perhaps you already know that. I don't have the mechanical skill to deal with breakdowns and Riding together can give you a lot more confidence to head into the unknown. Another person can be a very good piece of safety gear to take with you. Perhaps the road ahead becomes too difficult or you make a mistake. But as a pair you can always tackle the what ifs, you can live with the anxiety. On your own, you need to work more on stress avoidance. Around knowing when the road you're on is worth the risk and when you'll have a better time, turning around, putting it behind you and riding back. That's the thing with those sort of roads. If you're on your own, on the one hand, you don't want to do them because if you get into trouble, you've got no one to help you. But on the other hand, you know yourself, you know your body, you know what you're comfortable with. So there's no pressure about just turning around. So just do what you want and makes you happy. With all my morning's philosophizing done, it's now time to head to Doi Intanon National Park, where I plan to spend my first night of this solo trip. It's two dollars for my lunch. I'm not quite sure what I've actually ordered, but it's pork. It's probably pork and rice, or it could just be pork cooked in its own way, but usually if that was the case, they would also serve rice. So I was learning yesterday, how did Thailand get its name? And it started in the 30s because before it was called Siam, Siam, I'm sure you know that. Uh, but that was never a 
name that the Thais called themselves. It was a name that other countries called it, probably from Chinese. Um, and they were going through this whole big change at the time. They'd overthrown the monarchy, sort of. Uh, so they wanted a nationalistic country name. And they always called themselves Pratet Thai, which is land of the Thais. So they went with that, Thailand, right? Um, also, it had the benefit of Thai referring to this, a type of people. The Thai people isn't just people who live in Thailand. There's a wider Thai group who are in Laos, Burma, sort of China. So there's an implication there that Thailand should, you know, take on these extra lands to unite the Thais, which they did try to do. One of the things I was really looking forward to was going camping. It's something I have gone and done on my own as many times as I've done it with other people. There's something meditative, I think, about sleeping outside, you know? Um, you can hear nature, rain, <laughs> the music of people nearby. Even though this is probably more fancy than any tent I've ever camped in before on my own. Usually it's a pretty small affair, one and a half man, um, with my bags down the side and rammed in. Uh, but I just love it. The next morning, and I'm up early to watch the sunrise from the top of Doi in Tanon. Sunrise here is around 6.30 and there is such joy in riding this time in the morning. The air is cold, the light is beautiful and ever-changing as you and the sun both climb up the mountain. They call this mountain the rooftop of Thailand as it's the highest elevation in the country. And it certainly feels like you're on top of everything as you watch the clouds gathering in the valleys below. This is exactly what I had in mind when I decided to ride alone in Thailand. I needed some time to myself and some time to think. Before I ever got on a motorbike, I used to strap a tent to the back of my push bike and get away from everything and everyone to clear my head. Time in your own company, in nature, and at your own pace. I think it's a wonderful thing, and I can already feel my mood quietly lifting. It's now 8 a.m. and time to get back down off the mountain and back through the clouds. The breakfast in the campsite is such a typical Thai offering. Rice, boiled eggs, and some sort of meat and stock enjoyed with a delicious three-in-one coffee. And then it's time to get going. I'll be joining the Mei Hong Son Loop for the next couple of days, which is a famous Thai route in the mountainous Mei Hong Son province. Although these roads are mostly about enjoying the riding, I have been told to make a stop at a Thai sunflower display. I'm on my way there now, but I have just noticed a small problem. Mm. 
Somewhere in the last hundred kilometers, my <laughs> bag of swimming stuff has fallen out. It was really silly. I've um, not locked, not shut my right pannier. Um, and it was at the very top because I knew I wanted to go to a hot springs today. So I wanted it to be easy to pull out. A bit too easy. This is definitely one of those more Thai tourist places. Um, all the locals sort of told us about it. They're in flower for the next two weeks, or to be honest, it looks like they're getting to the end of their flowering stage. But yeah, you don't see too many Westerners here, even though the Mae Hong Son you see a lot, um, but you see a lot of locals. It's funny that, isn't it, how you get different tourism for people who live in a country versus people who travel there? Like, you know, if you go to a National Trust site in England, it's mostly English people, but if you go to Buckingham Palace or something, it's mostly foreigners. Hmm. Hmm. Pretty sure this is Fissilus, which I eat sometimes. Um, it's like sour, and you add sugar and or chocolate to make it sweet. It's really nice. Um, it's about one o'clock, so it's definitely getting to lunchtime. Mm. But I'll ride for a while and see where I end up stopping. Um, I was planning to stop at a hot springs today, but now that I've lost my swimmers, I, I'm not sure how I feel or the ties feel about swimming in your birthday suit. So maybe we won't do that. Uh, but yeah, get back on the road and there's definitely a lot more beautiful roads to go and see. There were more beautiful roads and I was on my own. And when you're on your own, you're in control. You can ride slowly over ridges. You can stop to take in the vistas. You can take your time because there's only your time to consider. There's no rush. No hurry in making it to your next stop, which in this case was a hot spring. They've decided for me. Well, I suppose it's a stroke of good luck. I was so disappointed with losing my gear. And then it turns out you're not even allowed to swim on Wednesdays. So, other than the fact I have to buy all my gear again, it's quite good. Crikey, this is hot. <laughs> the thing at the entrance said 56 degrees Celsius. I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit, sorry. Um, I can put my feet in for like two seconds. <laughs> Quite peaceful here with not being able to use it for swimming today. Continue onward, I guess. Thank you. 
so I'm in control for the next few episodes, which will be a little different to what you're used to seeing. Thank you for watching along with me, and special thanks to Ray and Shelley, who have chosen to join our supporters on Patreon. Harry and I appreciate everyone joining us on our journey, and speaking of journeys, I've just reached the end of mine for tonight. It's a good reward at the end of today's ride. I'm in a place called Ban Rak Tai, which people always say it's like a Chinese village, which I definitely noticed when I came in. Uh, the place I'm staying, <laughs> the accommodation reminds me of that story of the guy who goes to the Eiffel Tower to eat lunch every day so he doesn't have to look at the Eiffel Tower. You know, the accommodation itself is pretty ugly looking, <laughs> but you don't have to look at it. Instead, you'll get to look at this gorgeous view, which is just incredible. Uh, so I want to explore this town a little bit more because it's so unusual. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time here. Um, but for tonight, I'll just get some food. Didn't end up getting my dinner or my snack on the road or whatever I was going to have. By the end of it, I thought, oh, it's only an hour to get here and night's falling. I come down to the waterfront for dinner and everything's really bustling over there. And then I walked a little bit further over and I've got a whole restaurant to myself on the waterfront. And it's so charming. I don't know anything that they serve, but something looked good. And it's called Yum Yum Bai Yum Bai Cha, which I've never heard of. Even when I Google it, it brings up like Cambodian food with rice. This is not. It looks really good. They brought it over. It's like um like a sort of salsary, you know, mix of things, or like a lab without any. I don't think it's got any meat, it's got like onions, tomatoes, um, like herbs. Mm. It's really good. It reminds me a bit. It's very sour. Reminds me a bit of like a um, some town papaya salad. Um, and they brought me some tea and of course rice to go with it. Just realised I've totally lied to you. There's clearly meat in there, pork. Pretty sure. Hmm. So good.